you know, this prickly little gem right here is from the American chestnut tree. You know, chestnuts roasting out on an open fire. Well, unfortunately, they will never roast on an open fire again, at least not in our lifetime, because they're functionally extinct. And one of the last ones grew out here at this arboretum, but was killed in a drought in 2012. And the rest that remain in the United States were killed by a blight. There was chestnut blight in China, and the Chinese chestnuts had evolved to live through that over thousands and thousands of years, and the only ones who survived were the ones who could resist or tolerate the fungus, and they bred and then they repopulated the area with Chinese chestnuts. And they were carriers, they were the typhoid Mary of chestnut blight, but they wouldn't be killed by it. And in, I think it was 1904, uh, someone started bringing in Chinese chestnuts to grow here as a crop, and they brought the blight with it and it escaped out east. Now, all of the American chestnut trees out east were already killed or infected by the blight. The American chestnut tree that was living out here had not been infected by the blight yet, but it was unable to pollinate with any other American chestnut tree. Here in central Illinois, we were outside the range of American chestnut. It only grew in Illinois in one county. It was Pulaski County, just a few trees, just a little isolated population. The largest one we had was 75 feet tall. We'd grown that from seed more than 40 years ago. And 2012, we tried our best to water all the trees that we knew would be sensitive. And of course, in July in 2012, half the days were over 100 degrees. And I looked one day and it was all wilted and brown. It was, it was dead, there was no, no saving it. Now that drought killed thousands of trees all over the state and beyond. But all that remains of this chestnut tree, for most people to see, is its display in a few logs. This is a cross section just taken from what would be the end of the plank. And we have a piece of the bark from the tree down here. We have a, a burr that it made chestnut burrs because chestnut did a pollinator. It was only an isolated tree. And we've added a little plaque that describes the tree and the situation. This is a photo of the tree. Um, and this is a photo that shows the tree blooming and a little bird just starting. If this had grown for another 300 years, it would have been eight feet in diameter. It would have been 120 feet tall, just big, massive forest giant. Star Hill Forest Arboretum is like a zoo for trees. With over 2,500 trees and bushes on their property, it's often used for study and research for people all around the world. And it's the largest oak collection in North America by far. We have about 290 different types of oaks here. The next largest collection in North America is 90. And they are currently trying to save the most endangered tree in North America. You wouldn't think a tree native to Florida would thrive up here, but it is doing very well. So that means there's hope for their survival, as long as we don't screw this one up too. You know, right now we're in what they call the Anthropocene extinction, where human abetted events are causing massive extinction all over the world. There are some studies that say we're living between 30 species and 60 species a day worldwide from extinction. So it's a major, major problem because each one of those organisms that dies affects everything around it. Introducing new species, even with the best of intentions, has caused massive problems. Multiflorals were introduced by the federal government as a cure-all plant for wild habitat. What they didn't count on was that it was spread everywhere. So then once multiflora rose became identified as a problem that it is, well, let's switch to, oh, let's say autumn olive and bring that in from the Himalayas. Well, autumn olive became just as bad. Then, oh, let's switch to bush honeysuckle. And you know, the, the litany goes on, you just never learn that. So finally, in the 1980s, our own Illinois Conservation Department, which is what it was called back then, now it's DNR, uh, they decided with urging from a lot of us internally to switch to an all-native nursery production system. We should help save what we have, but the lesson to be learned for the American chestnut trees not to mess with Mother Nature. We've done enough harm already. Uh, so yeah, we have to learn what not to do, and, and if we make the mistake and do it, Immediately jump on up, monitor the landscape. If you find something, you know, call the authorities who have jurisdiction over that. Let them send out biologists to look at it. They identify it as a new insect or disease that's been brought in. Maybe they can get a big task force in there to deal with it and kill it before it spreads, basically. Petersburg, this is Steve Nichols, WAND.